In the previous video, we saw how we can use Aerodump NG to see all the networks that are within our Wi-Fi range and collect information about these networks, such as the BSS ID, the channel, the distance between us and that access point, the encryption that it uses, um, and so on. Um, now, after we do that, uh, we'll see, usually, we'll see a, a certain network that we want to target or a number of networks that we want to target. So once we have our target, it's more useful to run Aerodump NG on that network only instead of running it on all the networks around us. So in this video, we'll see how we can do that. So uh, I have my output here from uh, just running Aer Aerodump NG Mon0 on all networks around me. And I'm going to target this network. So that's my home network, uh, the UCPC62. I'm going to start sniffing on that network only instead of sniffing on all networks around me. To do this, we're, we're going to use the same program, so it's aerodump ng, and then we're going to specify the channel. So I'm going to give the channel, and the channel here is number 2, as you can see here. And then I'm going to specify the BSS ID, which is the MAC address of the target network, and it's this. So we're going to copy paste it. And then I'm going to add a write option. And this tells uh, Aerodump NG to log all the packets that it captures into a file. And the file name is, I'm going to call it now. So let's call it test UPC. And then we put the name of our Wi Fi card with monitor mode and it's Mon0. So uh, Aerodump NG, same as the program that we used before. Channel, we put the channel of the target access point and BSS ID, we put the MAC address of the target point, uh, access point and write, uh, we put the file name that we want all the packets to be stored on and then we have Mon0, the name of our Wi-Fi card with monitor mode so I'm gonna hit enter and as you can see the only network that shows up is UPC62, we don't have any other networks with us and we can now have a look on this section. In the previous video, uh, we had too many networks here, so we only had one section in Aerodump NG. This section was missing here, the second section. So the first section, as we saw in the previous video, contains all the access points that are within our Wi-Fi range. This section here. Now the second section contains all the, the clients that are associated with the access points here. So in here, this is this is not a network, this is a client, and it's connected to this network. We know that because we see the BSS ID here, that's the, the MAC address of the network that this client is connected to. So the MAC address here is the same as the MAC address here, so that means this client is connected to this network. Now this, the station, is the MAC address of the client, so this is the MAC address of the device that is connected to the network. Power is the distance between us and this device. Rate is the maximum speed that this device is running on. Lost is the number of packets that we lost. Um, uh, we couldn't capture from the target device. And frames is the number of useful packets that we collected from that device. Uh, we'll, talk into the, uh, we'll talk more about frames and data, as I said, when we start talking about web cracking. So. Uh, just want to show you now the two main parts again. So the first main part is the access points that are within our Wi-Fi range. The second main part of Aerodome is the clients that are associated with these access points. We have the MAC address of the access point here and the MAC address of the actual client in here. Now I'm going to control C. So now all uh, the data has been logged into a file called test UPC. Um, I'm going to use ls, which is a command to list files in Linux, and uh, just list the files that uh, Aerodump created. So it's going to add a star after it. Um, and we see Aerodump created automatically created four file four file formats. So in our command, we only specified the file name as test upc. You can see that Aerodump automatically added a zero one to the file name. It adds this just in case there is another file that has the same name. 
and then we have four different file formats the cap csv kismet and kismet xml let's go have a look on the files here in my home directory so it should be called test yeah that's it so that's the files here and they're in the home directory because my terminal is working in the home directory now, if we go pwd we see we're in the root directory okay now we can after we sniff those packets uh, we can use a program a program such as uh, Wireshark to analyze these packets and see what information we gather the problem is in this net specific network it's using uh, WPA encryption so all the packets are encrypted and we won't be able to decrypt them uh, unless we have the key so we're gonna talk about how we crack the key in section 2 of this course for now let's just um, and we're going to talk about how we use uh, Wireshark in section 3 of this course. So I'm just going to run Wireshark just to give you a quick look on how the packets show up. So they're, they're not going to be useful. They're all going to be encrypted. So uh, they won't really be any use to us. So if I'm going to go on the open file and test. Yeah, that's the file name and I opened it. And we see here we can get some information. So we can see, for example, here the source device is a Broadcom device, and it's going to, uh, it's just being broadcasted here. Uh, we can see here we have an Apple device communicating with the Broadcom. Uh, that's as much as you'll get. You'll get MAC addresses, you'll get um, uh, maybe devices, manufacturers, very, very simple information. All this because the network is encrypted. Um, we're, talk we're going to talk about how we can decrypt it and how we can get very sensitive information after we connect to the network. If it's an open network, you can connect to it straight away and jump to part 3 where we're going to talk about these powerful attacks. Um, for now, I just wanted to give you a quick look on how the packets look when the network is encrypted. Um, don't be scared of Wireshark, we're going to talk about it again in the third section. We're going to explain everything about it. So for now, I just wanted to show you a quick look on what the packets look like.